story of the Fifth Jubilee Singers, and we're talking to uh, Dr. Revis Mitchell and uh, the director of the Fifth Jubilee Singers, uh, Professor Paul T. Kwame. And of course, uh, Dr. Mitchell and uh, Professor Kwame, before we had our first commercial break, we were talking about uh, the music that uh, the uh, Fifth Jubilee Singers were able to uh, bring uh, to the world. But let's uh, talk about uh, the uh, tour. Let's have you to uh, talk about uh, the American aspect of that tour, and then Professor uh, Kwame can give us some information relative to the uh, European aspect of it during this second segment of the program. Well, from Ohio, they went to Oberlin, from Ohio they went to Chicago, Illinois, mm -hmm. eventually they traveled to New York and Boston, and that was a great response. People coming out to see these young people, uh, people curious about a, a, per, a group advertised as college students mm -hmm. out of the South who were African American and former slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, they often were, they were perfect Victorians, mm -hmm. and they'd never seen this type of discipline. You know, that was a time in the world when some people believed that African Americans couldn't discipline themselves to sing without instrumentation, couldn't discipline themselves to stand erect. Mm -hmm. So it must have been as much of a fascination with these people who the world was trying to link with inferiority. Mm -hmm. But they, they made some wonderful acquaintances. Mm -hmm. Samuel Clements, Mark Twain, mm -hmm. began to adore the Jubilee Singers and sing their music. Mm -hmm. Ulysses S. Grant in the White House, uh, he should have given more support what was going on down south because mm -hmm. he cared and he began to hum mm -hmm. the music of the Fifth Jubilee Singers mm -hmm. in New York, Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine young former slaves performing in Carnegie mm -hmm. Hall? That set the stage for a wonderful European mm -hmm. tour. And let's talk about uh, Professor Kwame, that European tour uh, over the few minutes that we have here. Yeah, he just mentioned Carnegie Hall and I will mention the Queen of England. Good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because these young students in 1873 were taken, 11 of them actually were taken to uh, Europe. And uh, this is history. Um, they, were, they sang in England, and the Queen was invited to, to hear them. And she was so impressed mm -hmm. that she invited them back to her court. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, the, the beautiful singing that she heard, uh, she asked her court painter to make a painting of these 11 students. Mm -hmm. That was given to mm -hmm. Fisk University, mm -hmm. which we still have in Jubilee mm -hmm. Hall. The other thing we need to remember is that these Jubilee singers were the first to introduce the Negro spirituals to the whole world. Mm -hmm. The other thing was that on their return from the European tour, they brought back $150,000, mm -hmm. money that was used in putting up the building we have on campus today, mm -hmm. known as Jubilee Hall. Mm -hmm. And that's where the portrait hangs. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very rich history. That's mm -hmm. right. The school would have closed if mm -hmm. it had not been. So they, the in, in reality, they actually saved the school. They, they literally saved, saved they the school. Saved the school. Uh, and uh, additionally, the 40-acre site which this sets on was purchased by funds mm -hmm. raised mm -hmm. by young people, mm -hmm. young students. Now, is the fact that there, that that was as an historian that it was 40 acres of land is that significant in terms of the history of uh, Fisk or the history of Africa? Well, I think it, I think it's significant in the fact that the 40 acres of land that purchased had been a former Union Ar Army contraband camp mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. slaves had been kept as prizes of war. Now. Mm -hmm. the slave would be educated. Mm -hmm. uh, originally the school operated downtown near the Union Station in mm -hmm. 40 little barracks. Uh, one of those is the Little Theater. Mm -hmm. But these young people purchased that site. Mm -hmm. It's the highest spot in North Nashville, the same site we're located on now. It's mm -hmm. the highest spot in North Nashville. Mm -hmm. And we think that's very significant. Mm -hmm. That higher education would take place at one of the highest points mm -hmm. in town. And so the campus actually moved from its present location, I mean from its earlier location to uh, the, present location. To the present location. So it was not uh, founded in the spot that it is on now. Is that it, what we It was actually founded in a spot near the Union Station downtown mm -hmm. where the Union Army had a hospital barracks, mm -hmm. a low-lying area that would flood. Mm -hmm. If you notice now, it's on a very high area. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Jubilee Hall, named for the singers, is often mm -hmm. referred to as frozen music mm -hmm. because of its architecture mm -hmm. and splendor. You know, Professor Kwame, when you talk about that European tour, give us some more impressions of how the Europeans uh, reacted to uh, this group of African Americans. It was just as... Um, W the experiences they had in the north here, there were people who did not believe that colored people, as they were called mm -hmm. then, could sing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, in a disciplined way. Mm -hmm. That was one impression. There were comments that people made saying they walked so quietly to their seats, mm -hmm. took their places. Mm -hmm. That was discipline. Mm -hmm. But again, the type of music they sang was very different and so very appealing mm -hmm. to them, to the point that at places where they were to sing, there were people who were in very much doubt. Mm -hmm. But as the news began to spread that mm -hmm. the, the music was wonderful, mm -hmm. 
they began to draw larger audiences. Mm -hmm. You know, Dr. Mitchell, I think you've indicated that this is the uh, anniversary, the 125th yes. 25th. 25th anniversary of the Jubilee Singers. What kind of plans are being made to uh, celebrate this well, anniversary? Well, over the year, there have been reunions of Jubilee Singers, art exhibits. Uh, Professor Kwame has directed a wonderful concert, a reunion mm -hmm. concert mm -hmm. on May 4th. Correct. That's taken place in Nashville, a wonderful mm -hmm. gala. Mm -hmm. So the university and the world, mm -hmm. but I think particularly, again, it's the Jubilee Singers because mm -hmm. former Jubilee Singers like Professor Kwame have gathered, mm -hmm. and they continue. And the Jubilee singing tradition, I think, is mm -hmm. safe and well mm -hmm. at Fisk University. Very good. And, and Professor Kwame, what can you say about uh, some of the members of your uh, present Jubilee singing group? Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because they are the group in place as we celebrate the 125th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And I would say that history was recently repeated because we were in New York mm -hmm. um, in the first week of March mm -hmm. and had to donate $1,000 which we were going to receive from a church mm -hmm. back to families of children who had been killed mm -hmm. in an accident that very morning. Mm -hmm. I still have very dedicated students who mm -hmm. understand what it means to be Jubilee Singers. They understand what it means to be ambassadors for Fisk University. Mm -hmm. They understand what it means to represent the African-American where mm -hmm. music and culture is concerned. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I guess in a real sense, Dr. Mitchell, you might say that uh, the generosity and the benevolence of this present Jubilee singing group in terms of donating the money in New York was similar to the benevolence and the generosity of the earlier group that uh, right. went to Chicago and donated its uh, money for the uh, Chicago very, Fire. Very much so. And for mm -hmm. 125 years, Jubilee singers did not receive scholarships mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are students who pay their way mm -hmm. and make their contribution. Mm -hmm. And of course, what we have during the uh, second segment, I mean the final segment uh, of, of this show, as the two of you know, uh, which will come up over the next uh, minute and a half, will be uh, a final segment dealing with the Jubilee Singers themselves and other things that are generally Wonderful. associated with that. And I think it will give our audience not only an opportunity to uh, hear the story of the Jubilee Singers is told uh, in an excellent fashion and form by you as an historian and by Professor Kwame as the director, but they'll also have an opportunity to hear some of the singing. Well, let me, uh, take, singing. Let me take this opportunity to invite our audience and all of Nashville. At the first opportunity, you have the opportunity to hear the first Jubilee Singers. Mm -hmm. Please avail yourself of mm -hmm. it. And of course, they do sing quite often around here, do they not? Yes, in fact, they'll, they'll be singing. Um, at the Ryman Auditorium on May 4th. On the 4th That's of May we'll, yes. at the Ryman Auditorium. Yes. And, Very good. And every October 6th, come to Fisk and see this year's edition of the Jubilee Let me Sons. thank the two of you for coming by and giving us that excellent information uh, this morning. And as we said before, we will have, we'll be back with our audience during the final segment with the story of the Jubilee Singers in song. Last year, nearly 800... On the Fisk story of...